and I've just put all this on and then realised I've got the hotel room key still in my pocket. <laughs> Cheers, thank you. Bye. Thank you, bye bye. <sighs> so, fully rubbered up. So, Reconic Hotel, it's, um, it was nice actually, I enjoyed it, although I think, oh yeah you can see it up there, there's a broken drain and it sounded like someone playing the drums on top of my uh, flat roofed bathroom this morning. Woke me up about four ish, something like that. But the hotel itself is fine, seen better days. But what it needs is your custom. So the recommendation from me is that it's a good little hotel, it's on the NC500 route directly on it because that road there is part of the NC500 route. So, I would use it again. The only reason I ended up using it is because there was nothing else available. So when you're planning a trip you sort of get it into your mind where you want to be, but where you want to be sometimes, and where you can get, are, are not always one and the same thing. So, this is where I ended up. But it was good. Worked out. So the trip is set to zero. We've got 171 miles to do today. <sighs> right. And we are clear. And away. To the rain. say windy. Anybody from the West Highlands could be saying it was windy, they'd go, nah, it's just a breeze. That's oh, just a breeze. Rain all over the inside of my visor.
wind when it comes through the gaps. So the weather report, so it's going to be like this all the day. It's not ideal, but do about that. I had some sad misguided hope of uh, putting the drone up over this lock, lock um, this morning when I was out yesterday afternoon. I didn't have any battery life left on the drone, so I couldn't do it then. This far end of the lock, where we're headed now, just looks really... Well, yesterday it looked beautiful. Just the other side of this lay-by. So I was going to launch it around this end here. On the right-hand side. But I couldn't. Because I didn't have the battery. Now, problems with this helmet. The vent in front of my mouth is either open or closed. I'm now getting wet in the face because it's either open or closed. There's a, another slidey flap inside the helmet as well. That's either open or closed. There's no um, adjustment to it. Open or closed, that's your option. So it's too cold when it's when it's cold out to have it open. So your visor steams up. I've had to have it open this morning, so I'm getting wet in the face because the rain's hitting the grills and just um, coming through, just hitting me in the face. So HJC, can't remember in make. No. For future helmets. Say, why don't you put a bloody adjustable thing on it? Because it's just not nice getting a wet face in this weather. The other problem is there's no bloody sun uh, sunglasses thing. You know, drop down sunglasses, steaming up. If you've got a clear visor on, like I have today, and then the sun comes out, you have to stop and put sunglasses on. Paint in the and I didn't realise that until after I bought it online. It's the only problem with buying stuff online, isn't it? So these are obviously sea locks here. And the tide's out. Empty.
suitable for coaches, so hopefully I won't see any of them. Hello? You all right? I can't, I can't hear you. Yeah, I'm on the bike, yeah. Hey? No, I'm all right. I'm just uh, negotiating a single track lane. Um, and it's p pissing down with rain, so. Yeah, carry on, carry on. <laughs> Can you hear me? Bloody hell. It's that burning smell. I think it's just water hitting the tube. See the road stretching off in the distance, and you don't expect it to go whipping around these bends like that. It's amazing <laughs> to think, really, that up in the mountains in the West Highlands on a bike, it's all made possible just by this little ribbon of tarmac that runs through it. Because years ago, you wouldn't have dreamt that you'd be able to get a motorbike up here, especially something as heavy as Fat Tracy. It's been um, difficult enough just walking places like this, I would imagine. Get them in now. Third. So glad I put a gear indicator on this bike. Something else that doesn't come as standard on this bike is um, a gear indicator on the dash, which is a buggering shame. Because when I first got it, I didn't have a clue what gear I was in. You know, new to motorbiking, riding this 1000cc motorbike, which some of you may or may not uh, may or may not think foolhardy buying a 1050 Sport for your first bike. But I'll tell you what, if I'd have bought something smaller, and go equally more or less as fast, oh, thank Christ for that, it would have been equally as dangerous. This is just probably a little bit heavier. Um, but this is the bike that I wanted. The other thing I was looking at was probably an 800 Tiger, something like that. But this one came up and this was the one that I really wanted for whatever reason. I loved the looks of it. This was what I wanted f to do this on, basically. Uh, and this one came up at the right price. They just knocked an extra 200 quid off it. So um, this was the one that I plumbed for. Um, you can ride her at slow speeds like this. Nothing different to what you'd be doing on an 800. And if you don't ride like a tit, then I don't see that there's any difference between this and an 800 or a 600. The, another bike that I was looking at was the VFR. 
800. Nearly went for a VFR 800. So anyway, like I say, I went for this bike. And I haven't regretted it either. No way have I regretted buying this bike. I love it to bits. Lambos all over the place. Alright. Ned. We're at a place called Ned. It's a nice house. What a view they've got. I think the VFRs are more or less just as heavy as this. Yep, yeah, you go in front, that's good. Because then there is less surprises for me. Drum beg. I remember seeing these places on the map when I looked at the map. And now I'm actually here. That bird was. I thought it was um, a sparrowhawk. Might have been more like a blackbird heading that way. Stay there, please stay there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Toilet. Wow, look at it, it's just stunning around here. Trying to look at the view and pay attention at the same time. Not easy. Not easy! I like the 24 hour uh, petrol stations though. Just stick your card in. Oh no, straight on. I thought I was going up there. Loch Inver. Loch Inver. Loch Inver. Say it up here. Go on, sheepies, out of the way. I don't know how clear the lens is. Hard to tell. I'm looking through a rain soaked visor. Rain on the inside, rain on the outside. This is better. Nice straight bit. Shit, no, I thought that went around the other way. And I thought, how can it? Because there's a freaking lock there, isn't there? Stopping. Now look at that open ocean. Now this bit looks familiar. Crystal clear. Down. So this is a B869. This is Clashnessy. Clashnessy, this is. So that'll give you an idea as to where we are now. It's all right, the road's wide enough here. Just get so used to riding on the single track, so when you see another vehicle coming, you then go, Ah! I've got to get out of the way! No, you don't. It's wide enough, you fool. Beautiful. It's beautiful.
So I've got two sections of road like this today and um, this one is the shortest one. So, <laughs> bloody hell. But I came here to do the North Coast 500 and that is what I am going to try and accomplish. Maybe a bit of water and a melt. Unfortunately, I just can't see a lot of the scenery and what's close at hand, which is a damned shame. I haven't had another little escapade of forgetting which side of the road I'm supposed to be riding on. I can't believe I did that yesterday. I just had a complete, a complete um, mind blob. I honestly didn't know what side of the road I should be on. It's just weird. A weird sensation. I was actually riding on the right hand side of the road when I left John at Groats and I couldn't work out which side of the road I needed to be on. It worried me a bit, I have to say. It did worry me a bit. These gloves are excellent, I have to say. These are the richer um, Street Touring GTX. No, Street Touring Gore-Tex. GTX, where did I get that from? But the richer street touring Gore-Tex gloves. Hands are nice and dry. So this is West Highland weather then. This is a West Highland summer. It's just back onto the main road. So I was on A869 and now I'm going on the A837. And get to the junction. Oh, arse! Pool 36. I'm sure it was less than that earlier. I thought it was 33 earlier. Anyway, got plenty enough fuel to get me through to Ullapool. So today's Tuesday and it's day four of my North Coast 500 adventure. Day three on the actual course itself, Inverness to Inverness. But if you watched previous videos, you'll know that I came up and stayed at Blair Gowrie so that I could do the Cairngorms overnight. So it didn't kick off until, well, I'm counting it as uh, the bridge at Inverness. The big bridge at Inverness. That's start and finish point for me. So when I cross that bridge tomorrow, that's the end of the North Coast 500 for me. But then I'm heading into, back into the Cairngorms again because I'm staying at uh, a place called Aboyne. So a big day tomorrow because it's two, over 200 miles. Uh, and I think it's going to be pretty much the same as it is today. Um, we've got Apple Cross to do in the morning and Balaknabar. So that'll be exciting in this sort of weather, won't it? Pretty much, I would say, pretty much the same as that last stretch was. Um, I don't see how it can be more technical than that. But then again, I've not done it before, so it quite easily could be more technical than that. Mm -hmm. 